Hey everybody, welcome back to Reads It For Truth. You do have your host, Stevie Garofalo. Today, I want to I want to take you through an article I read on the Epic Times, Epoch Times, depending on how you say it. I want to really put a plug in, a great news source. Matter of fact, the fourth largest news, I just, just heard about this, fourth largest, basically, I guess, news outlet that exists, certainly in the country, perhaps the world, but certainly in the United States of America. That's, that's saying a lot, okay? Uh, considering it's not on primetime television. It's membership only. I'll let you check it out. I'm not a, they're not a sponsor of me. They don't even know who I am, but it's a great program. They produced an article that I felt compelled to share with you. It's called The Opposite of Communism is Faith in God. And it was written by a gal by the name of Eva Fu. And it was written on uh, February 1st, 2024. It was updated February 2nd, 2024, the day after. And Ms. Fu quotes Republican Wisconsin Representative Mike Gallagher, who said this, Washington, D.C., speaking of communism's ultimate enemy is not capitalism or democracy. And that's many of you scratching your head. And he says, but faith in God, says Mike Gallagher, Representative Republican Wisconsin. He goes on to elaborate what he means by that. It says because communism itself is not a political economic system. It's a perverted inverse religion. It's an all-consuming ideology imposed not by free belief or on a free belief, but by force and indoctrination. He said in a speech at the annual National Prayer Breakfast in Washington, D.C., and I actually have been there before. I was actually tasked in the 90s with taking a uh, van full of Crips and... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, gang members from California. Whole other story I'll tell you another time through a Bible study I did by Doug Coe on Capitol Hill. It goes on the right, it's churches are the labor camps. It's confessional booths are torture chambers, and it's priests are the censors. The propagandists, the secret police. In terms of value, faith, and communism, they stand as opposite ends. While communism, he goes on to say, that seeks domination and abasement, he said, Faith seeks love, dignity, and individual and uh, self, and elevation of man's soul. It's interesting. The idea came to Mr. Gallagher as, after a recent meeting with the graduate student who became a quiet opponent of the Chinese regime because of his faith. And the Chinese Communist Party, the CCP, is bent on destroying faith because it stands in the way of the regime's uh, laying total control over the population. And by the way, I read an article a while back. It said that the reason when the churches were pretty free in China up until the point there were more Christians than there were Chi Communist Party leaders. And I think they were pushing up against, I've read anywhere from 250 to 350 million Christians. You didn't have that as many CCP people in the party itself. So they saw that as a threat. And But anyways, interesting, um, laying control over the population, uh, said the congressman who who's chair of the House Select Committee it, on Strategic Competition between the United States and the CCP. They actually have a thing as that. And it goes on to say, if, if they can stamp out our belief in anything greater, life becomes nothing more than an incentive of the party that it can offer. Now, the punishment it can deliver, life becomes nothing more than the incentives of the party that it can offer. The punishment it can deliver. That's, that's what Mr. Gallagher recalled the student as saying. They reduce men and women to flesh and bones, simple tools to use and build party objectives. The situation for believers in China is bleak. Uh, Mr. Gallagher noted that the regime f uh, famously imprisoned believers en masse and tortured them. The humans are material objects to be used for whatever purposes the party deems appropriate, Mr. Gallagher said. But in the communist regime's war against faith, no, no method, including the all-out purging campaigns, the pervasive censorship apparatus, and the massive spending on security forces can help it win, he said. And it's true. I've said it before on this channel many times. Dr. Geiser said, Christians are like tea. The best flavors come out when the water is the hottest. Christianity always grows, by the way. When it's persecuted, when it's left to its own devices, well, it kind of fizzles out in its own leisure and comfort and uh, lack of conviction. Because nobody does the hard thing. No one really acts rightly when times are good, they tend to enjoy the good times, right? It's what happens, human nature. He goes on to say that because you cannot, no matter how hard you try, no matter how much power you have at your disposal, you simply cannot kill the truth. And God is the truth, the congressman said. 
Mr. Gallagher is pretty spot on, man. Mr. Gallagher emphasized that strategic competition with China is not a test of two different militaries or two different socioeconomic systems. It is, at its core, a struggle for souls, he said. Our entire foreign policy, our entire statecraft must be built on this recognition of soul craft. And I'll end it there. Pretty strong. And I think he's right. When you look at people, it's amazing when people say, oh, you know, religion's a problem. It caused many, it caused many wars. Well, what do you mean by that? If one, if, if you're, if you're going to go one, if one religious group is going to kill the other, then they fought back. Is that because of religion? But does that make all religions true? Does that make, you know, all religions right? Or does that even make the action? But does that make the, the religion in and of itself and wrong or does it mean that people living out that religion maybe perhaps misunderstood or wrong that can happen too so you can't throw out god the baby bit the bath water come on that's silly i really this dr geiser said in class he says don't blame god he said don't blame christianum sometimes even same in their cases sometimes just blame dumb christians not christianum but i would see that in this case this is not the case i think we just we can blame lazy christianum because we've gotten to comfort, certainly, with our political freedom. So we're being sharpened. That's all I'll say on that. Great article. Check them out. Check the Epoch Times out. Again, I'm not. they're not a sponsor of me. Also, check out two other great resources. I want to invite you to check out EquippedAcademy.com. And if you want to get some online training, we have a new course just kind of got finished up. on. It's called Marketplace Leadership. It's going to... I do about do about 10 videos in there, quizzes and everything, and materials where you can actually... It's going to teach you how to share your faith in the marketplace, how to do better as a leader in the marketplace. Matter of fact, it's going to teach you how to, people will recognize you as a Christian by just your actions, not even before you say anything. And that gives you those key concepts. Secondly, and there's other training on there well. Check out, uh, secondly, my community, stephengarafalo.com. Love to see you over there. There's a subscriber level if you like to support us, but you can join for free. We have articles. We're going to have exclusive videos. We have many on up already. It's all there only at stephengarafalo.com. So thank you for supporting this channel. Hope you'll subscribe. Check out our other videos, but I really want to see you at the community and get some training. That's my heartbeat, okay? I'm your host, Stephen Garafalo. Thank you for tuning in. This is your reason for truth for today.